I'm Ronald Jr. Welcome back to my channel. And today I'm going to show you how to make a firefly awesome, the double cut that is. And today we're going to be shaving down that ugly hill that keeps getting in my way. A lot way. of concerns are if I chisel this down, if I sand this down, is the neck going to break off? And that's a negative. Um, this neck goes, you know, in the pickup cavity a good bit. And everybody's concerned about, you know, when it falls, the neck's going to break right off. That's any guitar. If you got an SG, the neck's going to break off if it falls. Um, the neck shape is fine. It's just the heel. The heel needs, like, chopped down and sanded big time. Like, there's, it just needs a lot of work, right? So what I'm going to do is make this heel go back a little farther so I can play it. Cool here. This thing looks pretty sick without a pick guard, okay? I think I might redo the finish on this guitar because I got to redo the finish on the neck anyway. Uh, this I might plug these holes or something and it might be a solid color. I don't know yet. That looks pretty sick, but I can't see the neck joint because I got finish over it. So I'm going to have to take the pickup out and see what's going on. Okay. Yeah, there's, there's plenty enough to work with. So I think we'll be okay are stripped down up on the body all the bushings are out the bushings wasn't hard to come out at all you know so i don't know how the tail piece stayed in there like it wasn't in there very tight uh, i'll have to fix that um, i got the tuners off up here i'm going to take this off and we can get started on carving the neck heel and then we can sand down the finish and finish it back to whatever color I want to get somewhere. But the whole point of this is not to go too far because you can sand the rest. Okay. It looks crappy right now, but we'll have to sand the rest to get a better, a better smooth, uh, finish. Uh, but we're getting it down. I'm going to go a little bit more, get this off of there, start sanding it down. All right. It looks really boogered up right now, but when you start sanding, you can shape this. That's why you don't want to go too far with it because you have to shape it. If you go too far, you're going to go through the neck and then you're not gonna be able to shake it. shape it, you're gonna sand through it. So make sure you leave yourself enough wood. It doesn't have to look pretty when you're first doing it and just start shaping the neck. I'm sanding all this finish off, all the way up. Stop and show you guys, mid process. I think I'm gonna go with a different heel joint. I think I'm gonna go with like a sloped heel joint and maybe even slope this. I don't know, but it feels a lot better, man. This feels like 10 times better to play. It won't get in my way. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and sand this by hand so i don't sand through it i gotta finish sand this as you can see it's uh it's a little bit more grainy but i gotta get the rest of the finish off the neck so i can see what i'm working with um you can see there is a heel joint right here glued but i'm just going to get this level and then you'll have a nice sloped heel joint which i'm kind of a big fan of right now so i gotta work on this side a little bit more get it down and get the rest of the finish off i got all the back sanded down as you can see there's sanding sealer on it uh, this would be a good time to feather the edges, feather up here, paint your yellow back. Uh, I do have some sanding to do. So I got a lot of work to do yet. Yeah, I just thought I'd update you guys. So, yeah. All right, I got this sanded down how I like it. Um, it's really smooth. I got it even on both sides. I even did a carve right here so when my hand goes up in there. I decided to go ahead and do a matte, maybe a matte finish, maybe a matte black. Because see there's a two-piece right here, and it's not going to look right if I stain it or anything or do a cherry burst. But I'm working on sanding the sides down and blending it in so I can start to uh, sand it down. But I got the neck smoothed out. I got to do a little bit more to it. That way it's a little bit more smoother. Got the headstock sanded down. And what I like to do is take a file and go right in the middle of this. Make an open book headstock while I'm at it. So that's what I'm going to be doing I don't know what color I should go with. I'm going to look up some online. And then first I'm going to primer it, probably. And then I'll paint it. Got the stuff all sanded down. Um, got to primer it up. Got to tape the fretboard and stuff off. It turned out great. So, got to go get some primer. Prime it up. I think I'm going to plug these holes because I don't think I want this jakey looking thing back on there. And if I do that, I can use dog ear P90s. So I'm going to plug these holes with the neck uh, shavings that I have. 
you know, just whittle it down, put it in there, glue it, sand it, and you'll never see it. How I did the heel was I just chiseled away kind of at an angle. I chiseled around it like that with a hammer and this chisel. I got it at Harbor Freight. And then what I did was took an orbiter sander and got it down to where I wanted it. Then I hand sanded the rest, okay? And I took an uh, orbital sander and did this too. This is beveled right in here so my hand can get in there. So it looks a lot better. Don't judge it yet because I haven't got the finish and stuff on there yet, but it's ready to paint. Well, primer and it's ready to go. So that's basically how I did it. All hand tools, orbiter sander to get it all sanded and rounded, and then finish sand it with my hands. All right, after I took a little bit of mahogany that I got from the neck, um, I like to use a little bit of wood filler after I get that done. And then I'm going to sand it flat, and then I have primer that I'm going to be putting on the guitar because that's what they had on it before, a white primer. And I found a uh, paint in the store that matched my particular guitar. It was uh, called Sunburst Yellow from Rust-Oleum, and it matched perfect. But I said, you know what? What the heck? I got this thing sanded down smooth, you know, where it's time to, you know, sand it. Or, you know, I got it sanded down where I can paint it whatever color I want. So I think I'm just going to paint it my own color. I'm going to go with like a little bit of an off-white Um I'm going to get that sanded down once that dries. And here is the back. It turned out amazing. I mean, it feels really good now. I mean, this is it's really awesome. We got the primer on. As you can see, it's starting to dry. That's what these light spots are. And if you get any runs in your primer, that's perfectly fine. Because you got to sand it anyway. you got to sand it down a little bit. Um, but it's starting to dry headstock primer dried and uh i went ahead and sanded it a little bit that's what's all over my hands um that neck heel looks a lot a lot better there's something about this every time i hand it to somebody to play they're like dude what is up with this guitar why is it why is the neck heel in my way that thing was so thick it just was in the way like i don't know what it is maybe i'm just not used to something like that but i have strats tellies and they don't get in the way like that. This thing was as sharp and huge, right? A lot of people are like, why are you doing all this work to a $140 guitar, blah, 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 leave it alone. Listen, if I'm going to play this thing, I'm going to make it my own and do it how I need, you know, because I love the guitar itself. I love the way it's built. I love the, you know, the company. But if they're going to skip steps just to hurry up and get money and forget quality control, you know, I'm going to have to do stuff like this. That heel is a lot thinner now, and it looks a lot better. I can actually get my hand where it needs to be. I mean, that feels that feels really, really good, right? I mean, this feels amazing. Um, and it turned out really great. Um, and the neck, I mean, it's still solid, man. It, 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 there's nothing wrong with the neck. Everybody thinks it's going to break off and all that. It's not. It's not going to break off. So there's the neck heel. Still needs a little bit more sanding, but hey, it turned out really awesome. Can't beat it for what it is. And uh, can't wait to get the paint on it, get it back together and jam out on it. Man, super bright out here. All right, let's step in here where this thing will adjust. Okay, we got it painted up. It's just drying, curing. Leave it out here to cure for a little bit. It's about 60 degrees. Perfect temperature for this paint. Um, it does need a final sand. So I got the tailpiece studs back in. The bridge studs. Putting everything back together now. So next time you see it, it should be all together. Ready to rock and roll. The strings, the pickups in. Got to get the wiring in. And got all the new tuners and stuff in up there. Fretboard conditioned. This thing looks sick. And after three days of working on this guitar and making it awesome, it's finally done. The paint's finally cured. And that ugly looking neck heel is finally gone. I can actually get up here in the high areas. And you guys seen how I made it. I just kind of made it, made it meet the body and I sloped the body so my hands can fit right in there. And it feels super, super good. And it makes me want to play this guitar again. Um, this guitar turned out awesome. Yes, I did paint it. I painted it an ivory white. And as you can see, it turned out super awesome. This guitar, you know, it, it makes me want to play it now. Now, do I recommend doing this? 
absolutely not. If you want to shave that hill down, that's up to you. But I went a little crazy and I want to show you guys that it's almost not worth it putting all this money in to a cheap guitar when you can go buy a mid-range guitar. You can get really good American-made pickups on a budget. I'll leave everything in the description below and then you can do the math yourself in your head and see that it's not really worth upgrading. And uh, I went ahead and refinished the whole guitar because I was not digging the fake TV yellow. Um, it was kind of off. Um, but it turned out really, really cool. The only thing I got to do is put a sponge on the back side of this pickup because it's kind of tilted that way. But everything turned out awesome. What more could I ask for? It looks 10 times better without the pick guard. That heel looks way better. I mean, it just, I can get my hand up there and I, I could probably enjoy playing this a little bit more. So I did make it my own. Um, when it comes to upgrading this guitar, I do recommend upgrading the, okay, first off, when you get into working on this guitar, I want to tell you that there, you know, you can tell there's some things that do need upgraded. When you're first getting a guitar out of the box, you think it's okay and everything, and it does perform. But I, this is what I recommend doing. I don't recommend refinishing the guitar or shaving down the heel. That's something I wanted to do myself. But here's what I recommend upgrading on this particular guitar. The bridge. You need to go get a Goto bridge. Bridge, even though this is the one without the retaining wire, it is got really cheap saddles and they're not that great. You want to upgrade that. You don't even have to upgrade the pickups and the wiring. Those are perfectly fine, which is awesome right out of the box. You want to go ahead and get you some different tuners because the tuners that are on it suck. And you want to get you a real bone nut. Mine was mostly plastic, probably mixed with a little bit of bone. Get you a real bone nut and uh, get you a good set of strings and that's basically all you got to do with this guitar and it will turn out awesome um but as you can see i went to the extreme and you know like i always do like to make people mad on the forums and on uh on youtube um but i just want to show you guys that this is what happens when you put a lot of money into a guitar and i've put more money in a budget guitar uh, just to show you guys that you can end up spending five, six, seven hundred dollars on a guitar and you can go buy one for that. So what are you going to do with this guitar? What's your intentions with this guitar is what matters. I mean, yeah, I can upgrade this on a budget and make it playable live or you can go crazy and do what I did and make it look better. I took that stupid pick guard off there. I thought it looked kind of jakey from the start. Um, so I'm really happy with this guitar after I did a lot of modifications to it. Um, I went ahead and rounded the fretboard off more. It's more consistent and my hand goes around it a lot more. And what I'm super excited about is I can now get up here. This thing was super thick and it was really sharp and it kept hitting my hand. Okay, so I don't know what was up with that. So I had to correct the issue and sometimes that's what you got to do. I didn't want to send it back because they all have the same heel. I really like this guitar. So why not make it? you know my own that's basically what i done here so i hope you guys enjoyed this video uh leave in the comments below if you've upgraded your firefly in any way you don't have to go to this to you know to this extreme but let me know check me out on guitar buzz talk show on facebook hit me up on instagram i'm ronald jr and i'll see you guys next time